found myself listening to Mumford and Sons. I think it came up on a like something. I don't know, maybe a playlist or something. But I heard Little Lion Man. And like, damn, I still love that song. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I did not listen to the first album again. That's an album that I've heard and I think is, again, fine. Um, but I did venture to listen to their second album, and uh, it, it sucks. It sucks. It's bad. <laughs> Wait, which which um, album is this? I don't know the order. Ba- of the ba- Babel. It's the one where they're all oh, sitting on a yeah. bench. It's, it's a bad record. Yeah. Um, he still a Nash type B. Do you know what really annoys me about Babel? Is that on the iTunes Deluxe Edition, it comes with a cover of Simon and Garfunkel's The Boxer, featuring um, the one that's called Paul from Simon and Garfunkel. Um, Paul Simon. 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 <laughs> Simon, thank you. Art Garfunkel. Uh, Art, McCartney. Art Simon? Anyway. Paul, uh, Gar- Simon. Paul Garfunkel. <laughs> Yeah, so it comes with the cover of The Boxer featuring one of Simon and Garfunkel. And on the moment where they're like, um, just to come on from the horse on 7th Avenue, they sing it as, come on from the girls on 7th Avenue. And my reaction to that is like, come on, you got famous with a song that had like the fuck every other word in the chorus. What, what is your game here? Well, oh, I see. I, I, thought, I thought you said, come on all the girls. But, and I thought that's actually quite a risque bar. Um, but no, you see. And, and I will say that is not on my version of the album. They say whores. Count yourself lucky. I do, because it's the only good song on the album. Because it's a cover of the best the, the best song ever written. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it sucks shit. It's just mediocre <laughs> bluegrass. By I, I'm against the notion of bluegrass by English people anyway. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> um, we literally live in the bluegrass state. So yeah. for context. Yeah. It's not a genre I'm even a fan of. It This is like, ugh. But I like, the first album was like fine. And I liked some songs off it. The more, you know, folky ones than the ones with the, the banjo line. That's the same as every banjo line and every damn song they've ever played. <laughs> rip it's bad that's that's really the only thing i've listened to what are you laughing at oh no 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 not you i i'm laughing because i i managed to hit the mute button on the microphone just in time to do the world's loudest sneeze uh and and i realized afterwards that it's going to be on the recording me me sneezing and you were looking at you the whole time yeah, I was like, oh, that's weirdly quiet. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Mumford and Sons suck. Bigger. Please continue. No, that's all I have. That's the only things I've listened that's to. That's five albums. Very good. Um, fun fact, um, there's a Frank Turner, Frank Turner song called Polaroid Picture where he mentions this bar called The Astoria, which is a bar where all of the new wave of British folk in the 2000s got their start playing open mics, including Mumford and Sons. Why doesn't if this we surprise had a, um, me? If we had a like a, a, a drinking game for the podcast, <laughs> then one Everybody of like Frank Turner trivia. Yeah, no, specifically the words "fun fact about Frank Turner" <laughs> or "fun fra- fact there's a Frank Turner blank." I bet Frank Turner hates Mumford and Sons. Oh no, <laughs> question. no question. And listens to Converge in his spare time. I can't imagine. <laughs> Yeah. God, yes. Laura Marling dated make, the lead singer of that man. Make, Christ. He's, make, make Frank Turner post hardcore again. He's yeah. married to Carrie Mulligan, which is the most infuriating thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Wait, Frank Turner's married <laughs> to Because you Mulligan? should be no! married to Carrie Ann Mulligan. Marcus Mumford. Oh, yeah. okay. I was going to say, that's No, if Frank weird. Turner was married to her, I'd, I'd be like, all right, it's not me, so it's worse, but you know. Um, I listened to Debut by Bjork. Ooh, that's um, good. Bjork. Sorry? D butt. <laughs> yes. That was <laughs> horrid. Hashtag cancel Tyler. That, 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 it wasn't the pun, the bad pun. It was Tyler's expectant. Eh? Eh? That's exactly what got me. Because it took me a second, too. I was like, what did he say? Motherfucker <laughs> said D butt. By uh, like, I realized after I said it the first time that it wasn't funny, but then you asked me anyway. to repeat it, and so I thought I'd better sell this. <laughs> anyway, um, 
technically pronounced Bjerk, I think, with an umlaut. Yeah, it, it, she is pronounced um, Bjerk. Yeah. Um, uh, it's good. There are some songs I love on it. I feel like it's unrefined Bjerk. Um, Oost is better. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, oh, hot take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I like I liked the back quite a bit. Like I think there are some good songs on it. <laughs> you're, you're gonna stick with this, are you? You're gonna stick with this. <laughs> my I, mean, thing. I would have yeah, gone better. with like debit, as in like debit card. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tyler, pronounce her last name. Go on, I'm sure. <laughs> That was a far more valiant effort than any of us could have given. That starts with a G. <laughs> oh, the serotonin. In Jesus I just don't want to be in this body, so I, I do have these images of it of it leaving me. But then again, I understand I need a meat plane to drive. Um. Please. That's, that's maybe my favorite <laughs> way a human body has ever been referred to. A <laughs> meat plane. Mm, yes, the meat um, plane. Right. So, Midnight I meat plane. About... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I, I think I've talked. I think I've talked about every song on this record. I don't want why to fully every... exist on the meat plane. Well, here we are. Um, meat. I don't want to exist on the meat plane. Would be a great vaporwave album title. Um, the meat plane, I anyway. want to get off. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is their worst album, um, New Wave. The reason they chose to work with Butch Fig was basically, <laughs> he was the only producer they offered who consistently worked in the rock genre. Hmm. So, they went with him. Um, which is... It was either him or Timberland. <laughs> yeah. that, that would be a record. I, I don't know. I'm not going to say it would be good, but I would like to hear it. That I, would be of the Lulu, would. the of Lulu of against me. <laughs> um, be against me with is... sense, and Tyler would be like, "Oh, this is fascinating." <laughs> it features easily their worst songwriting, just repeating the same clunky ass lines over and over and over again, like Protest on test songs. In response to military aggression. Stop, take some time to think. <laughs> figure out what's important to you. Stop, take some time. Are you restless oh, like me? <laughs> Stop, <laughs> take some time to think. Are you restless like me? serious to say. Protest songs in response to military aggression. You, I think my point has been illustrated. <laughs> um, it's just lazy. And it's underdeveloped, and it sounds bad to boot. Whoever recommended this, parenthetical, I can't immediately recall who it was. Go fuck yourself. I hope someone coats their finger in lemon juice and pokes you in the eye. This gave me a headache at work twice. I can engage with abrasive and obtuse music of all varieties, but this is me at my fucking limit. Credit where it's due, you gotta love the sheer almost punk rock levels of dedication to not adhering to the rules, but just because you break the rules doesn't mean you make something worth my very precious time on this earth listening to. Listening to pretty much anything else that cites this as an inspiration instead, something like Frank Zappa, King Crimson, fucking anything is far better use of your time. And my more, I suppose my the best summary of my thoughts other than that is as follows. <laughs> oh, please be careful. All right, let's, let's get into the next album I listened to for this week, which was uh, Mount Eerie by The Microphones. Uh, very, an album I'm that is- uh, Microphones by Mount Eerie. It's a joke. I'm not sure that it was. <laughs> <laughs> Early onset dyslexia. That's what it was. <laughs> Early onset dementia, more like. <laughs> that, that. What's that funny? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I 
that's just, yeah, it's what's funny is I drank this entire bottle of beer very fast. There are some people out there who say the name of this band is Talking Heads is better than Stop Making Sense, and those people are wrong. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> it, no, it's not a W, Tyler. It's a, it's a big L. <laughs> well, fucking, which way do L's go? It's this way. <laughs> Two L's makes a... A U for you need to stop. <laughs> I also listened to My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy the, by Kanye West. The, the spit from that laugh, I felt it in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Transferred across continents. With each listen for me, the 40, the nearly 45 minutes of this album just seemed to get faster and faster with each listen and that is not only a, a testament to pacing and just enjoyment but I feel it's also a testament to to what this album is is going for in the sense of the your life in a sense getting shorter and shorter everyone will hear the same audio that this al that Phil has recorded but I feel everyone will picture something entirely different as they listen to it. Yeah. Because it's, the world is just such a, a vast, bountiful place that whatever you can connect this record to is just inevitably going to be completely distinct and personal to you. August. Augustus. Augustus. Well, uh, I think I, I've made it pretty obvious. Uh, 10 out of 10. Oh! 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 <laughs> How many episodes? Yeah! Yeah! I mean, legitimately, I thought this would take years. <laughs> well, it's not like about how many episodes because we can't control what albums come out when. We just got lucky. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. true. Like we did with Punisher for the rest of us. Yeah. 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 So, um, this is a, a bad album. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It's. It's. I think it's important to consider the context of this band's career for the past fifteen years to understand why this is so massively underwhelming. Is because it's like. It's like, I mean, fuck yeah, it's like they go as long as Tool does before making a new record. And it's like, yeah. this is what they fart out? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this underwhelming fucking wet fart of an album is what you come out with after six years of doing nothing but touring? This is what you have for me. Dude, I... Be, Led Zeppelin 1 and 2 were released the same year. What is your excuse? <laughs> what is your excuse for this wimpy... What is wimp? your major malfunction? Yes. What is your damage? What, what happened? What happened? Just... <laughs> Are you okay? Like, in two okay. seconds, we reference, like, Full Metal Jacket and Heathers. <laughs> I'm gonna. I've had two beers. Very quickly, <laughs> I'm going to give myself an aneurysm if I don't take a breath. But like, I have not had an experience this unpleasant in a while, and it's just for. I mean, I know it's like how it's such a nothing record. How could it be much of an unpleasant experience, especially when you just listen to Metallica's Reload and and then. <laughs> and yes, I did. I did. I did. But I got what they were going for, even if they failed at pretty much every attempt on that record. <laughs> Here, I don't understand what they're trying to do. I don't get it. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe, because like, I, I can, things can be bad because they're a failure at something, but the worst shit is bad and you don't know why it's bad. You just, you just know that it is. And you, and, and you start to question your sanity. You start to think, well, hang on, have I actually like forgotten what is good? Have I like, have I forgotten like what? <laughs> Music is? 
angry time. Am I taking crazy is, pills? Am I the only one around here that cares about the goddamn rules? It, like, the thing is, the band sounds so distant in this recording. It sounds as though the producer put the mics in a different room because even he couldn't bear to hear how far this band has fallen. <laughs> this is a man who hasn't even heard their other album. I know, but I believe they're good. I believe it. I just, mm -hmm. I, I don't even need, I will maybe listen to them because of the love that's been expressed and because I feel like I'm being a real bastard to this band. So I probably should do them a favor and really give their other stuff a listen. Yeah, I believe, um, I believe same. It comes from a, a place where they were making great art and, and it just makes me so much so angry that they have produced this coming from that place. More angry than I would be if this was a band that had always been shit. Because here I just feel like, why oh, you know better. I know you know better. So why are you doing this? As for uh, what I feel, what I theorize under Bach stands for. <laughs> you make words so much more difficult than they need to be. And this yeah. is one of it's one of my favorite bits. Please never stop. <laughs> but uh, anyways, what this stands for, you got to consider the year this album was released. Nineteen ninety-eight. You know, two other de two debut records of bands I really love were released in nineteen ninety-eight. Those being the debuts of System of a Down and Boards of Canada. So I theorize this stands for Under Boards of a Canada. A uh, lovely portmanteau of those two names. So what, so what does System of a Down have the, to the, do with the that? portmanteau, the inclusion of System of a Down, and that one is it's just the fucking word, ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, a no, Canada. No, not the Canada, not Canada. A Canada. Down's debut. Words of a Canada. <laughs> That's the dumbest fucking comparison I've ever made. Yeah, Sarah Show, why don't you, you are definitely this podcast resident Biffy expert, so yeah, contextualize. Right. Yeah, Explain guys, why. The sensation. <laughs> why are Biffy Give me an right? explanation for this. <laughs> Who is responsible? I would like to speak to Mr. Clyro. <laughs> <laughs> I know if you look at Biffy Clara's name on Google, it comes up with that awful meaning, but the one I heard oh, was um, they were all at school together and they were coming up with like alternative um, Cliff Richard memorabilia and they had a biro pen, so they were like a cliffy biro, and then they changed the letters. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever heard. Oh, I like that. That's cute. That's funny. Yeah. Um, anyway, I want to jump um, off a cliffy biro. <laughs> the more I think about this record, the the more I'm convinced that Biffy like weren't even trying. Like they didn't weren't taking yeah. themselves seriously. Really. I mean, look at that fucking cover. It looks like. Yeah. It looks like. It does. Like, how do you mm -hmm. make something like that and think, yeah. "Yep, this is like." A, gonna make people like, want to listen yeah. to this you look at the like the cover of only revolutions which is like beautiful and symbolic to me um and it just captures so much of the energy of that record and you and you look at this and it's like an a level b art project like, who's, the guy? Art project. who's the guy who's the guy why is there blue on this the, 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 i actually had something you just some storm thoughts but um i had ever since he died notes. this band just sucked i think that was it no. that was what <laughs> that was the turning point <laughs> i wonder his fucking wife divorced <laughs> Yeah, it uh, was the one the whole time, like saying the, these demos are shit. Work harder, like no, 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 do art The this. image of these guys like mourning him so bad, so much <laughs> that they just forget how to make good music. That's <laughs> mine. Half-hearted attempt at some sounds sort like, of social. Sounds like the seagulls in Finding Nemo. It does, and he just says it over and over <laughs> and over and over again. And it makes... I can't believe you said that! 
Ah! My brain is melting. Like, just... A televised mind! And they came back in 1986 to release what is considered by many the opus of their career, if such a thing can even be determined with the first five albums of these, this quality, uh, Master of Puppets. So, oh. yeah. Pastor of Muppets. Hmm. Kill oh. yourself. <laughs> like that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, Morgan I can't has believe to go I've never chemo, thought of guys. that before. Say goodbye. Sense. Like, yeah. Anyway. That's the worst thing I've ever heard. Like, and I what's great <laughs> about Pastor of Muppets and Master oh, of Christ. Puppets is that they essentially oh, like mean the same thing. What? <laughs> My God. <laughs> My God. Holy That's awful. shit. <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever heard. No, I don't want you to say I will. I'll kill myself. My God, this is like this is like being unplugged from the Matrix for the first time. Until some of the songs just kind of drag on at the end for a little bit too long. Most Bruh. notably, I just I just don't really think Orion Bruh. is that great. Oh, oh! I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I'm oh. sorry. Oh, I don't mad. think it's. I don't think it's bad. I don't think that it is really. I, I don't even. What think is this shit? Like, I'm a, it's not even a mediocre song, but I think that it it, it bridges between Leper Messiah and, and Damage Inc., which are really great. Uh, like Damage Inc., just sort of like it. it it's it's probably what would. Mm, it's tough deciding between this one and Kill 'Em All for which one I like more because this one has the, the obviously stronger ending. It's just that when I listen to this, I always find myself thinking at a couple of points, all right, I've gotten everything I want out of this track. Let's move on. Let's go. Pick up the pace, guys. We're, we're like, I want to keep thrashing, but this this feels a bit, this, a bit much. This man just told Metallica to pick up the pace. You I did, and they should! I can't believe what I'm fucking hearing right now. About this song. Oh, the whole song. Who man. fucking who? Everybody man. else agrees with you people. Man, I thought, this, I, thought this I was man. gonna... Who I thought, this man? I thought you I was just, gonna be the you one. You know what? You just sped on Cliff Burton's grave. Whoa! You did. You... Whoa. 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 Hold let's, on. Let's take a step back. <laughs> Hold up, bro. I think every song on here is exactly as long as it needs to be. Um, at me the, next uh, time, honey. I did just at you. But yeah, that was, hey. was, was about as direct as an at gets, really. If if I <laughs> yeah. want, if I, the only way I could be more direct is if we were in the same room. Um, <laughs> the, the sexual tension between the two of you right now. Mm, is it not always that way? It's no, I know. As good but... as it is. It's almost as good as it is between you and me, Tyler. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That, mm. I'm, I'm not involved in any sexual tension, though, which is fitting. <laughs> I think that's of your own volition, so. Yeah. And speaking of vinyl and building off of August's uh, listen to the Twilight Sad, I finally listened to uh, another Twilight Sad album because I have been enamored with uh, 14 Autumns and 15 Winters ever since I heard it, and it has become <laughs> one of... I can't wait to watch that back a million times. <laughs> I only got a glimpse of it, so I'm excited. I want to make a gif out of it. I also listened Yo. to The Money Store by Death Grips today, uh, this week. Oh, speaking um, of pleasant voices. <laughs> oh, say fudge! <laughs> say, I say get, 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 get. I got the flavor! Hey, that's, uh, that's enough of that. Falling out of tune. <laughs> This is gonna be a good episode, I can tell. Um, <laughs> I'm in your area! <laughs> okay, I'll stop now. Really, the only uh, notable th other thing that I listened to this week is what we're uh, covering next week, which is the new Rustin Kelly album. Yep, I did Shape too. And Destroy. Um, and I, yeah. I obviously can't <laughs> get it. <laughs> God damn. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, no, what? No, I haven't heard it. I'm not like being snarky. Oh, okay. I was just trying okay. to like say, don't say anything about it, but you already kind of yeah. weren't, weren't going to. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm. I'll. I will say. For now. Just that it's a ten. N- no. Um. Well, now I we know it's say... con- confirmed, not a ten. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we don't. We don't actually, because I've only listened to it once. Same. And things may change a week from now. All right. But all I would say is that, that right now, I am not disappointed. It's good to see R. Kelly, R. Kelly releasing new Shut music. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh. so Tyler antagonizes not. Morgan so hard that he stole a joke from Sersha's brain and made it. Such a mean joke! I'm so proud of you. Look, on the, look, on the note of artists I, not disappointing I was not, us, let's I, talk about him floating the garage. No, no, no! Look, 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 look! I just want to say I did not say that to antagonize Morgan. I said it to get it out of the way, so it didn't have to be said next week when we review sure, it. Sure, that's a likely story. Likely story. Yeah, I, I see. He's already kind of upset. He's gone. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so let's talk about exploding the marriage. Um, <laughs> Exploding the marriage is the alternate title for us to get this new album. Oh no! I just needed, oh, I just, God, I just, I just needed to make to make this right. This God, I'm gonna go to hell. Morgan, oh, did no. you hear oh. <laughs> what he just said? Oh, I'm going to hell. <laughs> we're we're doing bands that people know and are listening to because you know and they suck you all have <laughs> terrible taste even if jake thinks that they're just ha- has beans and he's probably right to an extent but you know why enough. are you looking at labeling that opinion like it's not totally common to think that <laughs> who the fuck gives a shit <laughs> anyway, ex- excited to review the new Nas album next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, my history with Bright Eyes is, is there, but much more um, in the background, I would say. Um, I first became aware of them um, a few years ago, basically, as trawling my Spotify recommended daily playlists. Um, when just all I was listening to was like the, the back end of that will be an acoustic band I've never heard of. It was a period of my life where I discovered Cry Wank for the first time. So that should give you some context of the kind of Bright Eye songs that I was hearing. Discover um, what? Um, we, we, we all remember our first Cry Wank. <laughs> <laughs> that is Cry Wank. <laughs> Don't we just. I'm honest to God. Yeah, my favorite Rolling Song, Stone Song, uh, Happy. Mm. said mm. no human being ever not even like Keith, Keith Richards or whatever. Keith, Keith Davis yeah I don't care this <laughs> 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 man said Keith David no I'm just imagining Mick Jagger <laughs> and Keith Richards in the alley fight and they live yeah, that sounds awesome <laughs> that sounds shit. awesome yeah, that oh, would I cool. would I would watch that. One okay. of them would throw Dimension. one punch would... and the other would reduce to a pile of bones. <laughs> Just I mean, because they're 70. I... Okay, so well, even sure. back then, they were on Wait, so much can... drugs that they were like held together by spit and force of will. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to this album and I can't help but imagine the person who loves it. And this person is probably 50 plus years old, um, hangs out at his local bar with wood panel floors and he TGI drinks Bud Fridays. Light. He drinks Bud Light. Um, he wears flannel and he beats his wife. Um, oh, <laughs> my God. I mean you we were thinking I, it, but you didn't Yeah, I mean like I can't like fight you on that at all. <laughs> like, oh, holy shit. Somebody um, who has like an old collection of seventies vinyl of records that no one gives a shit about and this. So it's uh, so it's John Lennon if he was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I I would just like to say that Sarah just said that people who like this album love this album are wife beaters. That's not <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. That, that, I picture the archetypal fan. I pic- yeah. No, I picture the archetypal fan. Right, okay, okay. No, uh, yeah. Which is a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. If I disliked to... The Unforgiven originally, imagine my shock and horror 
well, the Unforgiven um, 2. I think I have an even more emotional dislike of the Unforgiven 2 because oh. I really like the original Unforgiven song. I, I, yeah, I love, me too. Yeah. It's a good song. Can I be for, up front? I, I love the Unforgiven 2 because it's the worst thing ever and by that <laughs> virtue, I can laugh my ass off it's, of that. It's uh, very funny. I if you can understand the me, then I can understand the you. Like he's fucking Super Mario on this. Are song. you unforgiven too? <laughs> Are you unforgiven too? <laughs> the pun. Are you unforgiven Lay beside you? me under wicked skies. <laughs> <laughs> Lay beside me. Oh no, we can scare. Black heart and scarring darker still, but there's no sun shining through. Ugh. This album, it, it sounds like Metallica heard the heard the name Garage Rock Revival as a genre tag and they thought, oh, that means you play music really shittily. And it sounds like ass. It, it makes no sense why a professional band would make an album that sounds like this. It, it, it boggles the mind. It is such Saint, a fascinating. Saint Anger is a concept album about being a toilet. It's. That's, I was going to say it's that is a the first album. thing I. That is the first thing I heard when I joined Bag concept album about being the toilet. It's a concept album where the concept is that it sucks. So here, here are the album titles that were displayed on a whiteboard in the studio towards the end of the uh, production oh, of St. Anger. I need to hear these. Uh, old, un old Ugly Nasty. Yep. Best Dressed okay. Chicken in Town. <laughs> <laughs> Butchered. <laughs> oh yeah. Sarcasm with meaning. <laughs> what, the oh my God. <laughs> what, the, what the hell, dude? Can you believe this shit? <laughs> Surfing the zeitgeist. <laughs> Unbridled. I ain't a scared no more. <laughs> you just sit there to yourself and you think, man, Saint Anger is a terrible album title. And you're like, that's the best they could come up with. And the answer I to that to question is no yes. more. <laughs> that is the best they could come up with. Sounds like that, Jake. Look, look, I've not even got to the best ones yet. <laughs> Floods of vomit. <laughs> well, at least that one's apt. We're already dead. <laughs> Shinderu. Light, hate, speed, love. My this favorite Coldplay punk. album right there. <laughs> We're just haunting together. <laughs> 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 it's either a Metallica album title or a Phoebe Bridgers lyric. This next one. Or, a, or a Megatheth title. Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Feels so much better. Ellipsis. Not to think. <laughs> Got a few. There's still more. There's a few more. <laughs> no, this was a big whiteboard. Are, are, are you saving the best for last? I, I'm look, I'm just reading them in the order they were written. Go, okay. okay, do it. But there's there's plenty of good stuff. No, here. keep keep. Uh, uh, satanic cuckoo clock. <laughs> uh, unresolve. <laughs> that that's just factual. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I a am, genuine artistic expression. I am my own friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh my god. Uh, 
it's just embarrassing. In this next one, the your is spelled uh, Y O U R, not Y O U apostrophe R E. But oh, okay. um, like as if, in belonging. Yeah. If you're broke, you were never fixed. <laughs> <laughs> what? Lots back there. Yeah. Um, Is okay. that a command? And, and two more, just two more. Uh, every oh gift has its price. That just sucks. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. how gifts. That's not and how gifts work. <laughs> fin- finally, the unclearness is very clear. <laughs> Those are all, uh, r- look, I don't know how serious even they were taking them, but they were written down on the title whiteboard yeah. in their studio, you know, all of these things. You can see it in some kind of monster. Some, somehow, I, I have more insight into the album by result of hearing those. But yeah. St. Anger yep. truly is uh, the best dressed chicken in town. I do still think Doolittle edges it out narrowly, but I could see Bossa Nova becoming my favorite Pixies album at some point. It's just so good. It's so much fun. Um, but generally, the songs are a little bit more um, filled out than some of the shorter and more ramshackle tracks on Doolittle. It's, I won't say it's closer to conventional rock music, but um, it's, it's certainly not because there's some really weird moments on this album. But it is um, uh, certainly, I think, the best uh pixies album to listen to first if you're not or if you're new to the pixies uh and it just is just generally super underrated and really really good um and yeah it's incredible how a group of like wood nymphs came together to be a very informative band yeah exactly right and they made an album called bossa nova which you cannot dance the bossa nova to at all Um, (laughs) uh, well you could try um, but yeah, so I had a really great week but of revisiting do animals, albums I love. Do animals understand the lyrics to do little? <sighs> if they do, I would say very little. Of them. That was back to back the two worst jokes <laughs> mentioned on this podcast. Yeah, no, that's that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where my mind is. <laughs> so, I, somehow, Tyler, ah, Jesus. <laughs> Somehow, to you smack see, you. We're just descending <laughs> further and further. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't surf been trying to say that. <laughs> what, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> <sighs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah! <laughs> hey, okay. I hereby tender my resignation from the Jansen Tea Podcast. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Before this monkey goes to heaven, let's talk about. Stop. Already. <laughs> uh... <sighs> How cool is it that the no. Richard this Kelly? This is a put... setup. Stop. This is a setup. No, it's not a setup. I was just going to say it's awesome that Richard Kelly put Wave of Mutilation on the soundtrack for Southland Tales. It's a good song. That is. Oh, oh is it? Yep. Yes, the pro- it and it's oh, the best version of Wave of Mutilation, in my that's opinion. Cool. It's a fair opinion. I like every version of that song. I just think it rules. Um, yeah, it's a great song. Let us now turn to our new releases. Um, Boy. And... Russ and Kelly. Yeah, I was getting to that. <laughs> I was trying to like build it up and like really set the scene. I was like, let us now turn to our new releases. And so she was like, Rustin Kelly. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, so this nice. is the same man who put a uh, wave of mutilation on the Southland Tale soundtrack, as I understand it. And, uh, and, did, and did the remix to Ignition. Rustin, mm. Rustin Kelly, only the hot, hot second most talented R. Kelly. Uh, figure yeah. in the world of, of cultural art. As has been said many a time. Also, Casey Musgrave's ex-husband. Yes. That was that was the word. <laughs> Just edit out this episode. Just cut it. The whole thing. That's relevant, is it not? I, well, I mean, first of all, you you do have here. Let me let me formally introduce this. Salvage this fucking disaster. I, um, I know. Rustin he tried to talk about an album, then someone distracts him with a joke, like a merry-go-round. 
What? Rustin it's Kelly. A, it's a K Casey Musgraves reference. Rustin Kelly. All right, um, I don't mind if the joke takes a while to get because I'm all right name. with a slow burn. Rustin <laughs> <laughs> mm. Kelly is an is a European uh, electro house musician known for his 2007 album Cross. Now, I personally think audio, video, disco isn't as bad as shut, everyone else says. Shut up. And shut, this <laughs> shut up. Shape and, Just shut up. Shape and Destroy <laughs> is my favorite song on Metallica's Kill Em All. I don't fucking do this anymore. I'm gonna cancel the podcast. Okay, okay, I'm done. I just, oh, no, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> so... Justin Kelly is an alt Americana singer songwriter who has been making waves uh, a bit. Structural choices, lyrical choices, stylistic choices that also remind me of this, but played with a more Americana style. I'm teaching my grandmother to suck eggs in the case of Jake and Morgan, so I'm going to move off of this segment. Um, what? <laughs> Is that just a British saying? Um, it's definitely uh, just a British thing. I've heard uh, it before, uh, but, but I, I have no clue. I think the only I, time I've ever heard that is on I, Rand I and feel like this episode of the James T podcast has been <laughs> happening in a language that I have just learned how to speak. Like, no, <laughs> I still feel like I'm having an acid dream. August is sitting in front of my face, and Sersha just said I'm teaching my grandmother to suck eggs. <laughs> The only time I've ever heard that is on Ren and Stimpy. Ren's all like, I'll teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Speaking of riding a wave, uh, we have to talk about uh, really <laughs> the most memorable song for all the wrong reasons on this Round album. of applause for women, everybody. Give it up for women. Till the war is <laughs> Give won. it up for the ladies. This is literally the all women are queens. Uh, if she breathes, she's a fox. <laughs> as a rat. I want to particularly uh, <laughs> shout out as well. There's a moment on this song that literally made me. I couldn't stop laughing. I was inconsolable. <laughs> and it's on Lil Durk's feature on this song, the hook, where he goes. <laughs> Please let me get this out. Ooh, she independent. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, the real <laughs> conviction, the real conviction in the way he sings that. Like he's like really like, you know, a champion of, of, of the ladies. Oh, she don't need no man. <laughs> Bjork's, Bjork, Bjork's medulla is basically just like listening to someone have an asthma attack for 50 minutes and it rules. An asthma attack? Wow. An yeah. ASMR attack. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do and is only have. Asthma, asthma. It doesn't you sound. Got, you keep saying. It doesn't sound any different from the way you would say asthma. Because <laughs> <laughs> you say it wrong in the U.S. You say asthma. Like All that. right, prison island boy. <laughs> The front bottoms is actually slang for a priest's dick. Um, last time I heard, I thought it was for, I thought it was slang for a vagine. It might be. That's, <laughs> that's what my dad brain, told like, me. Like trying very quickly to decide <laughs> which variation of the word vagina he's gonna use. Yeah, I mean it's one of my least favorite <laughs> words. I prefer almost every variation on that word to the the, the scientific what about, what term about, itself. Come on, you can't you can't prefer foo foo. <laughs> well, considering that I've never heard it before, yeah. Well, oh, safe yeah. To, safe is, to say. This is grandma sucking eggs all over again. <laughs> Jake looks despairing. <laughs> so, naturally, I was interested in just being like, oh, yeah, we should totally cover this. And, you know, it got, like, this is getting uh, pretty decent reviews and, and whatnot. Uh, they have, like, a lot of records that are decently highly rated that I have checked out, and uh, th I, I have liked a couple of those. And uh, then we have this album, and 
Yeah, uh, no. Pineapple thief, retire, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the way in which you say, retire, bitch. Well, I just want, like, imagine the the scene from Three Billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, where it's like the drummer from King Crimson and Pineapple Thief, and and still and so and uh, Porcupine Tree, and still no good records. How come Pineapple Thief? <laughs> <laughs> One record, 12 tracks, no drum fills. How come, Gavin Harrison? It is a wasteland of creativity. It is music only in the sense that you can, in fact, listen to it. But can you? And you shouldn't, but you can. Yeah. Wait, you can hear it, but can you listen to it? Okay. You, you raise a fantastic You know. Mm. Let's you know. not hear philosophical here. Um, <laughs> people hearing without if, listening to the song than anything on this record. If a uh, yeah! If a pineapple thief sucks in the middle of an empty forest, does it still suck without anybody to hear answer? <laughs> yes. The pineapple thief is so bad that I'm now pro cop so that someone can catch this thief. <laughs> <laughs> Today on this week's Record Club episode, we are going to talk about Sarah's recommended record this week, which is the self-titled by uh, the Violent Femies. Please, Sersha, introduce your record. The so Violent I want, I want Force Femes. <laughs> what? Uh, that that the, is the, not. The, the that Fox is not. Force five. <laughs> 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 Tyler's one is the not Fem a Force Five, <laughs> <laughs> and one of them is just like still quite a masculine trans woman who has to overcome her character arc is to fit in with the trans femmes. I agree. Uh, so I'm gonna immediately pick uh, pick up on that with uh, the first record I listened to being. The Devil and God Are Raging Inside of Me, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm, I guess the best way to sum it up is uh, in my own words. That being, uh, it's an album where on your first listen, you're like, wow, th this is an album about just the most wretched, vile, disgusting person unforgivable on the world in the world and then second listen it's like oh this is about me isn't it <laughs> and it just i'm in this picture and i don't like it <laughs> <laughs> in in spirit of the brand new uh listening experiences of everybody that they've had recently i went back to their first album uh oh. your favorite weapon which God, I love it so much. It's real good. It's, it's real definitely good. So June their, on a semester abroad fucking fucks. It's definitely their uh, It Never Goes Out. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Ab I believe, 100%. I, I believe I made that comparison in the video. You did. Oh, yep. you might have. That you might be why did. I thought of it. Um, but yeah, that actually, that the their first three record arc actually kind of does fit nicely with the hotel yeah. three yep. record arc. To me, anyway. Um, yeah. Yep. Yep. Just yeah, less that's... naked people on the front cover. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there are skeletons. That's kind of like being naked. Okay, Phoebe Bridges. That's that's maximum naked. <laughs> that's like super <laughs> naked. That's like hella hot. So that's like that's like Rorschach Jake. naked. Jake, skeletons. That's hella yep. hot. Yep. I like Phoebe Bridges. The fact that I am sexually attracted to skeletons should not be a surprise. Do you want to bone the skeleton? <laughs> that has been it for this episode of the Jam to See Podcast. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Next week we're going to be reviewing Sufjan Stevens and Dick Codes. Anyway. And we're also um, reviewing uh, the Alan Parsons Project, the Dick Up My Ass. <laughs> rock over London. Rock on. Chicago. The Sufjan Stevens Project, the Dick Up My Ass. Wow. Cause, Homophobia. Because he get it. What? Because <laughs> he's gay. <laughs>
this is the worst episode we've ever done. The uncontested worst Deftones song appears on this record in the form of Pink Cell Phones. And the thing about this out uh, this song is that I went back to it and I was just like, you know, maybe I remember one specific thing being bad about this song, but maybe everything around that bad thing is good. And it's not, it's a terrible song. It has virtually no momentum, virtually no punch, nothing particularly memorable about it at all until the end. It's just fucking... kind of a wet fart of a song, and then it devolves into the spoken word piece at the end, which is notorious amongst Deftones fans about, it's about, it's about unprotected anal sex, and it's about poop, explicitly. <laughs> yeah, they just, they just say it, and it's, and I just, I don't, I don't, I don't particularly get the choice there. Like, I'm not gonna try and go into an in-depth analysis of this song. I'm not, I, I, I don't care. It doesn't deserve it. It's bad. Uh, it's gross. I don't care to listen to it. I don't know why it's on the record. I don't know if it maybe serves, uh, maybe it serves a thematic purpose. Uh, but it just, it doesn't work for me. And there's just so many songs here that leave a fucking void in my mind. Songs like Mine, the fucking Konami Code song, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, select, start, just like, and just absolutely washes over me in one ear and out the other. I, I like, if there is a least memorable Deftone song, not a worst, but a least memorable, it's definitely that one. Uh, rats, Rats, Rats. Uh, uh, sure, fine, whatever, I guess. Dumpster uh, fire. Songs this is a dumpster fire section. This is a dumpster fire of a section. I don't like Jake's opinion on this record. It's notoriously controversial. Nah, 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 nah. And then we go into rocket skates. Fuck. This song is awesome. The fucking refer- the Deftones mm -hmm. broke into my house. Stole my Xbox and had sex with my girlfriend. And I let them happily. I was happy about it. I think this record has outstanding highlights that tower even over some of the band's most monolithic achievements. Like, of course, the ever spectacular song, fucking Phantom Bride, which has maybe the best guitar fucking solo on their career Dan, ever thank you jerry cantrell yeah who contributes to this track in i'm sorry ways. what did you not know no what that's yeah you're kidding me <laughs> yeah it's, it's listed on the apple music uh feature for it is not it is not it is not on spotify Jerry Cantrell oh. plays the guitar solo in Phantom Bride. Oh my. He, he absolutely does. Oh my god. I can't and, believe uh, I knew that before Morgan. <laughs> I can't believe I knew that before Morgan. That's maybe the most surprising I can't thing. Wait. I can't wait to watch this back when I first say that <laughs> and watch Morgan's <laughs> face. If I make it as a musician, I'm going to commission a concept album where different people are invited to do rap remixes of different tracks on Quebec on Wien's Quebec. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. There was one song and I can't remember what it was, but the only thing I could hear while I was listening to it was someone rapping over it and it sounded fire. And I was just like, I want this to be the whole album now. Oh, um, just, if I ever get a lot what? of money, I'm just gonna like smoke a lot of weed. Y'all got <laughs> ambition. My least favorite would be Death Star, and I would give this album a probably 4.5 <laughs> out of 10. God damn, you went hard on that one. Holy wow. shit. 
You have to do Please. that for every album from here on out now. <laughs> you, you think I won't? Yeah, yeah I, I think will. you won't. Because <laughs> you'll yeah, forget well, it's a bit. Steve Buscemi disagrees. What the? F- <laughs> Are you seeing this shit, Getty Lee? <laughs> what is it? All right. As I write this, Ohms has only been out for a week, and I find it much more interesting to wait and see where things go between me and the album. The best albums are the ones we cultivate a relationship with over the years and years, ones we get to know as intimately as a cherished friend. I have no doubt Ohms is one such album, and I am in no rush. I mean, I, and I am in no rush to see it fully flesh itself out to me as time goes by. This mm-hmm. kind of album, a kind we're lucky to get, maybe one of each a year stands as a reminder that the best kind of relationships, not even relationships with art, but ones with people, cannot be fully appreciated in a mere week. Sit back, let the album take you where it wants to take you, let it wash over you, and simply enjoy that life grants us things we can love this much. Because this is our time, and we devour the days ahead. Oh, yes. That was so good. Yeah, oh my was. god. Ah, that was ooh. Oh fuck. That was I'm gonna so go very eat, nice. I'm going to go get cheeseburger now. It's, and now I've always, I've always it's always kind of like struck me as I've gotten older how kind of funny that that line is like yeah. she's got to be strong to fight them. So she's taking lots of vitamins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but but like, this track like Power does Rangers also, or something. Yeah. <laughs> give, me Flint, give me Flintstone gummy. <laughs> Whereas, like, when I was five or right. six years old and I heard that yeah. line, I'm like, yeah, 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 you would, wouldn't you? You would. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining little Tyler be like, ah, oh, yes, I, I, I do understand this. What, what, hey. else is one, what else is one to do in such a situation? Yes. I mean, those Flintstone gummies hit this. This is, this is how I show discipline my body. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to it with headphones, with your ears awake, it is so rewarding on a production level. Just every sound is so immaculate, even without the psychedelia influences. If this was just released as like an alternative folk record, like the last couple of Beck records, it would be great. God, yeah, Beck, well, it, it, Beck be interesting again. Please, God. It, it, it would actually not be like the, the Beck records the last few ones because it would be uh, interesting and good <laughs> but i i suppose um, god yeah, beck is killing him with yeah, scientology yeah. i suppose my point is more that the last couple of beck records although they have the psychedelic folk influence of this anyway clearly are influenced by records like this and it, uh, this is better Okay. My point was just that just, I wanted to take a shot at Beck. I don't know. <laughs> no, but, it, but yeah, my point is like... He's a Scientologist. What, the last couple of Beck that. records are sort of acoustic songs with heady... No, I think you're thinking of production. Morning Phase, uh, which yeah. he, has, he has released two albums since that one. I, well, I, I, although I, mean, I did can, not know that. I was going to say, we can forgive Sersha for not knowing that because they are I, albums that have had the impact of a stiff breeze. Okay, okay. The, the last time I pop. cared about Beck was Morning Face. <laughs> the last time anyone did was. Well, that's so that's, a, I can't blame That's you. a mediocre album as well. Morning yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah it absolutely okay, is. Okay, so can we please move past my lack of knowledge of the last two Beck records, please? I don't even know sure. where we got to Beck from. Like, what does Beck have to well, do with I mean, this? Well, no, my see, point was more... I can't even remember how I got onto it, but it made sense at the time. I have had whiskey. Can we move on? <laughs> I have also had whiskey, so... This is a good record. I love it to pieces. That is enough. And Beck sucks. Beck is a Scientologist. <laughs> Fuck him. Beck, more like hack. Jake, can you clarify? I was, I'm not quite sure if Beck's a Scientologist or not. Can you haven't seen it? You haven't seen <laughs> yeah, it a yeah. times. He is. He like, is a Scientologist. Was he, was did he you know, like, did you know? Born Scientolo- was he born or did he convert? No, he, he <laughs> is was. Is anyone born a Scientologist? <laughs> um, was, there are people old enough now who were. Yeah, do that's true. Who, what, do you want to know who was born a Scientologist? Uh, Elizabeth Moss. Rock. Elizabeth Moss. I'm pretty oh. sure Beck has like revoked Scientology or something. He's spoken out against would it. Be, I'm pretty would sure. Would be nice if he did. But this we is don't, we, off we the don't point. talk about 
Elizabeth Moss being a Scientologist here. We don't acknowledge that. <laughs> I, I forgive her. Stream that the Invisible Man. Into... I, I forgive Elizabeth Moss that because she was born into it. You feel me? She didn't really have a choice. Okay, no, so just a point of clarification. Uh, Beck has said, I am not and have never been a Scientologist. My dad was a Scientologist, and so people started saying I was a Scientologist. Well. So there you go. Best sorry, not, I What an arc that has apologize. been over the past Yeah, I was going to say, I'm so, I'm so sorry, man. That well, sucks. he still makes mediocre music, so. Um, their blend of sort of taking sounds which previously had been seen as incredibly macho, and using it to sort of dress down the sort of systemic ways that we build up walls in our society, led to a lot of people calling that Mercury Prize nominated record um, one of the most important records, one of the most important bands at the time. They seemed to really speak to the voice um, of what people really wanted to hear. They captured the zeitgeist. They do capture a voice on this new record, that voice being a YouTube comment section. Um, <laughs> and then there's the song like Mr. Motivator, which is one of the most condescending songs I, I, I've ever heard, making very cheap um, sort of Trump pussy grabbing jabs that just feel it like they were- so fucking bad. They, it feels like they were written the day that clip came out. I mean, what year is this? It sounds like the fucking La Tigra song from 2016. Yes, yes it does. Fuck off. And th there's references to Delia Smith. Delia Smith song. make me a cookie. That, that's it. That's Don't another thing. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> that's how he says it. He, it's so I know weird. That, I know damn that's, well that's how he says it. That, I, that, I don't, I'm not interested in hearing it again. What do you guys, th what do you guys think Joe Talbot makes of, of a Joker? <laughs> <laughs> you can do it! You can do it! <laughs> You're Joe right. fucking Kalzaki! I just, I, I imagine he's a fan of Todd <laughs> Phillips. There's points where he's like, fuck you, I'm a lover. And it's like, fuck me? No, fuck you, buddy. I've had to sit here for half an hour and listen to your shit. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> fuck me? Did you say? <laughs> <laughs> he tells his <laughs> he tells his haters to eat shit, and it's just like you are preemptively looking at the back. You know you have made a trash record, and you're well, just no, like, no, no. well. What it is, they're telling their haters to eat shit, and this is it. This is the shit. <laughs> uh, the most egregious example of a noble failure on this album is Ne Touche Pour Moi, uh, in which Joe affects an I respect women posturing. And then, <laughs> and then, oh, oh, she independent! <laughs> Genuinely. Genuinely a far better moment. Oh my it's a miserable, god. <laughs> miserable attempt to write a feminist anthem. And it brings on the brilliant Jenny Beth from the great post punk band Savages, mm -hmm. who are a legitimate feminist punk band. Mm -hmm. Brings her on to sing the title and nothing more. It feels like a cheap gesture, frankly, to just have her say, Ne touche pas moi, and nothing else. I mean, it sounds like a joke. It does. It does. I like women. I allowed one to speak. <laughs> Look at my African American over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, the, the writing on this song is so staggeringly ill advised that it almost comes across as an attempt to mock the very cause it is so desperate to support. Indeed, when Talbot screams, consent, 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 consent over and over it does not sound like a cry for autonomy it sounds like an order mm -hmm. kind of contradictory huh mm -hmm. this like this is the kind of fucking song that a 4 chaner would write to like delegitimize the left as a kind of Th fucking this psyop. album's a psyop <laughs> To delegitimize the left. Uh, That's what it have, sounds like. Idols have been compromised by the CIA. That's the only explanation I have for this reason. That Joe Talbot has been assassinated and instigated with a puppet frontman. <laughs> After making a record as good as Joy, 
the band could have rested on their laurels, and in many respects, that could have been fine. They have instead elected to piss on their laurels and throw them at us. <laughs> of all the things I am sick of this year, I am mostly sick of being talked down to. Of being confronted by people who wear their politics like fashion. People who shout aphorisms and surface-level societal critiques at a brick wall and act like they're Maya Angelou because they read some Twitter threads and support the hashtag resistance. People who don't actually care about the suffering of marginalized people, of the lower class, or anyone in general other than themselves. People who use easy targets, who condescend and abuse their privilege not to promote unity, but to further the divide. People who forget that the heart, or that the heart of all this hate, this struggle, this deep and profound, it's all about compassion. It's all about understanding. It's all about raw humanism. Centrists who promote ambivalence, leftists who ignore real issues, and far-right grifters who use their own half-baked ideologies to say fuck you to real suffering in the world. And yes, out of all of that too, I am sick and tired of Joe Talbot, who can come around and make an album like Ultramono and try to ride the wave of the resistance by applying tacky sloganeering and ridiculous hyperboles to his songwriting and profoundly lackluster and uninteresting music. I came here to rock the fuck out, to say fuck you to the man, and to bask in the glory and camaraderie of my fellow brothers and sisters. I did not come here to be condescended to by a bunch of trite shit I already know or see right through. So no, Joe, you can sit the fuck down today. Your words do not deserve to be analyzed by me, and I will not pay them the time of day, because you haven't earned that from me. Don't waste my time, and don't you dare act like making this record is some kind of activism, or that it makes you better than others. It isn't and you aren't. And because of that, I'm going to talk about something that deserves your attention far more. As any further time dwelling on this soulless tripe is giving you far more than I should. So instead, I will kill two birds with one stone. And that first bird is by telling you to fuck off. <clears throat> this year, punk act Spanish Love Songs released a record called Brave Faces Everyone. An album you've heard Morgan Tyler and I reference a few times in our What We've Been Listening To This Week segment. And we've talked about how we wished we had a podcast when this album came out, because it's an album and a band that has not received a lot of attention at all. So I am going to now review that instead. Kiss my pasty white ass idols. Uh, I loved the guitar solo on the song so much. Um, yeah. This is also what, like their first record where big loud guitar solos make sense. Um, it fucking goes. It's so hard. <laughs> yeah, like like I already said, the solo on the wood pile just just destroys. Like, yeah. it's a miracle I haven't been involved in an in an automobile accident. <laughs> so. Can you imagine getting out of the car after you like rear end somebody, and then it's just like, oh, I'm sorry, I was listening to Frightened Rabbit, man. <laughs> No, I just like getting out of the car and just the guy's screaming at me I'm like, hang on, the solo is about to start. Hang on. <laughs> we'll, deal like we'll deal with this. We'll deal with this. The damned. Um, and they have to sort of so like, no, wait, wait. Rewind this. Yo, I'm going to let you finish, but this Frightened Rabbit album has one of the best guitar solos <laughs> of all time. It's easy to see the sadness and even real life despair knowing it was the final record from the band and that Scott's death soon followed two years after. It could be seen as difficult knowing that in a long and arduous battle, the man responsible for all this wonderful art lost. And while it's difficult to reckon with, I think it's not about what we lost with Scott's death or the death of anyone we've loved. It is about what we left behind and what they leave behind for us, what he left behind. It is, in essence, a monument to the good he did and the people he helped, a towering headstone for a career meant to exercise and fight demons, to claim hard-fought victories, and to revel in the things that make us feel small, but the things that bring us together. For every tragedy of Scott's passing, and for the passing of all who we once knew, there is at least one miracle left behind, evidence that they fought to be here. 
These things can be as small as a memory or a prayer or as large as a prolific career that could only be made by someone whose talent and love was put towards the things that they were truly passionate about, difficult and ugly things. Painting of a panic attack is Frightened Rabbit's darkest hour, but it is also a shining and resplendent reminder that every battle, no matter if we win or if we lose, is one that is worth fighting until its conclusion.